Most of us, as we've just been talking about, have never lived through a storm of this magnitude. And for many in South East Queensland, this is going to be their first experience with an intense tropical cyclone. So what does it actually feel like? The sounds can be quite eerie. You can hear a lot of banging, a lot of crashing, a lot of howling. So that can be quite daunting and quite scary for some people. First-hand accounts from those who have experienced cyclones paint a terrifying picture. The deafening sound of winds loud as a jet engine, air pressure so intense it's hard to breathe, horizontal rain and gales with the force to lay waste to a city. Normally I'm out there chasing the storms, but for this one, I'm now the one getting chased. This one's coming to, to my home as well as many others across South East Queensland. Cyclone Alfred is now expected to make landfall in the early hours of Saturday morning. For those in the firing line, here's what to expect. Within that 12 hour time frame of Alfred making landfall, we're expecting those damaging and destructive winds to become a little more widespread across South East Queensland. Once winds get to about 90 kilometres an hour, bridges will start to be closed. Within six hours, it will be clear where the storm will make landfall. About six hours out from Alfred's landfall, we're probably looking at wind speeds topping up at about 120 to 135 kilometres an hour, and then between 90 and 120 kilometres an hour, extending inland from the coast. Then, the moment of impact. It's going to be this weird feeling for those people that are going through the eye. There'll be the really crazy winds to start with. And then once the eye moves over, there's going to be this really strange, calming sensation. And then once the backside of the eye comes over them, there is an expectation that the winds will increase quite quickly once again. That level of intensity expected to linger over Brisbane for 12 hours, dumping a possible 800 mils of rain with wind gusts of up to 164 k's, strong enough to down trees and power lines destroy boats and damage houses. About 30,000 homes across Brisbane, the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast are at risk of flooding. There was some concern yesterday that may further develop into a Category 3. The chances of that have reduced. But how much damage Tropical Cyclone Alfred inflicts depends on more than just its Category 2 grading. Its slow movement will see a more sustained, intense rain on the areas below. As it approaches the coast, that slow movement is a concern in terms of the rainfall and the potential flooding from that. Being in a tropical cyclone in southeast Queensland, it hasn't happened in 50 years, and we're kind of just rolling with the punches at the moment. Well, Yetta Gertner is the coordinator of James Cook University's Centre for Disaster Studies and has personally lived through at least five cyclones. Yetta, thanks for being with us. Just what is it like to be in the centre of a cyclone? In the centre of the cyclone, it depends on what you're actually referring to the centre. Obviously, the, the wind's coming from the one direction. And as we've just heard, that eerie calm in the middle of the cyclone. Uh, and that's quite deceptive because um, people want to go outside. They want to check the damage of their house. But there can be those wind gusts um, unexpectedly that come up and they can be quite dangerous. So um, it's really about a matter of staying calm and knowing there's going to be wind coming from the opposite direction that can be just as dangerous, if not more so. Wow. For people who've never dealt with a cyclone before, what are some practical things that they can do right now to prepare? Well, fortunately, we've got another day. So it's really doing those last minute preparations, making sure that anything that's loose outside is taken inside, tying down things that you can't take inside, uh, making sure you've got sufficient food and water. And we're now recommending five to seven days of food and water for everyone in your house and food that they're going to eat. Um, we're not sure when, when supply chains will be open or whether you're going to be able to get out of your house. Make sure you've got a backup battery for your phone. Make sure you've got uh, an AM, FM radio because telecommunications can actually also go down. So uh, expect the worst and be prepared for it and then you should be covered for all contingencies. And what about in terms of their insurance? Are there things they can do to make sure that those claims go through? So every insurance company is highly variable, so we recommend calling your insurer before you dispose of everything. Um, they can require photos or inventory. Um, so having all your important documents, either photocopied or in a waterproof document wallet, um, because they'll ask you what your policy number is, and the quicker you can provide that, the easier you can get your claim to go through. But don't throw anything out without confirming with them first. What are the biggest mistakes people make? Uh, there, there's a lot of kind of myths that go around about taping windows and opening up at the leeward side of your house. Um, modern houses are built to be relatively resilient. Obviously, we don't have the same cyclone standards down 
on the South East Queensland as we do um, north of Rockhampton. Um, however, we do recommend when the cyclone's going, just stay in the safest room of your house. Don't get up to, to move windows and open doors or, or do anything. Just stay in the safest room of your house so you avoid slipping on, on water or broken glass or anything like that. Thanks for the advice, Yetta. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Now, we saw earlier the incredible scenes from the storm surge and Steve Smith is the Commissioner for the Queensland Fire Department, which also covers floodwater rescue. Steve, we've seen some crazy footage and we have also seen, unfortunately, people clearly not taking heed of the warning seriously that they should stay away from the water. Just how frustrating is that? Oh, look, any time that people don't um, heed advice from the authorities is, um, becomes pretty frustrating. And look, it's, you know, people see it as a bit of harmful fun, a bit of play, um, but what can happen quite quickly is that turns to tragedy. And that's tragedy for the individual involved, but also their family and friends. And, and it ties up resources, exposes our people um, to extreme risk. And uh, you know, we just want people to contemplate that they're operating in a large scale disaster event. So it's not an isolated operation. Um, and resources need to be in place for those unavoidable sort of emergencies that we respond to. So when Alfred hits, huge flooding is expected. I think some people might be surprised to see us talking to the fire brigade about this. What is it that your teams are doing to prepare for that? Yes, yeah, so we've done a huge amount of preparation um, for the approach of TC Alfred, and that includes um, our specialist swift water rescue firefighters deployed across the impact area in order to make sure that um, we've got a response network able to be, you know, timely across that um, impact areas. So they're very specially trained, they're um, very aware of that operating environment, and they're positioned in order to respond um, to community needs. Thank you so much, Steve. Really appreciate your time. We'll let you get back to some very important work. Thank you.